Good morning and greetings in the name of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ and welcome. Sorry I'm a bit late this morning, it's Bishop Desmond and as you can see um, we've changed the surrounding a bit and God bless you this morning and thank you for joining us. The sun is shining and we give God thanks for that. You know, and our, 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 one of the things I just want to talk to you about today is what is the greatest thing that you can do in life? What is the greatest thing that you can ever do in life? Amen. And we want to explore that today because do you know something? Many of us have varying views, but you know, at the end of the day, God loves his children and God is with those that love him. And I say God is with those who love him for one simple reason. If you don't love God, although God's presence is there, you have to ensure that you open your heart to the Lord. Because he's no discriminator. But one of the things is, you know, you just have to be there for the Lord. What's the greatest thing can you do in life? You are my strength. Strength like no other, strength like no other, reaches to me. You are my hope, hope like no other, hope like no other, reaches to me. In the fullness of your grace, in the power of your name, you lift me up, you lift me up. Unfailing love, stronger than mountains, deeper than oceans, reaches to me. In the fullness of your grace, in the power of your name, you lift me up, you lift me up. In the fullness of your grace, in the power of your name, you lift me up, you lift me up. Your love, O oh Lord, reaches to the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches to the skies. Your love, O oh Lord, reaches to the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches to the skies. You are my strength, strength like no other, strength like no other, reaches to me. Amen. Let's praise God this morning. The sun is shining. We should have joy in our hearts this morning. You know, no matter what's going on around each and every one of us, and I'm sure each and every one of us has something going on, but we must give God the glory, the honor, and the praise this morning. And give him thanks. Give him that all important thanks for being with us. Sign me up. Sign me up for the Christian Jubilee. Write my name, write my name on the roll. For I've been saved, I've been changed since the Lord has lifted me. I want to be ready when Jesus comes. Oh, sign me up, sign me up for the Christian Jubilee. Write my name, write my name on the roll. For I've been changed, I've been changed since the Lord has lifted me. I want to be ready when jesus comes amen praise god this morning our call to service this morning is taken from psalms 147 and it reads like this praise ye the lord for it is good to sing praises unto our god for it is pleasant and praise is comely the lord does build up jerusalem he gather he gathereth together the outcasts of israel he healeth the broken in heart 
and bindeth up their wounds. He telleth the number of stars. He calleth them by all their names. Great is our Lord and of great power. His understanding is infinite. The Lord lifteth up the meek. He casteth the wicked down to the ground. Sing unto the Lord with thanksgiving. Sing praise upon the harp unto our God. Let us pray. Father God, thank you today, Father. Thank you for making us enjoy this wonderful day, Father. As we're into this bank holiday, Father, we give you thanks for the sunshine, Father. Let it resonate in our souls today, Father. Despite all the environmental factors which are impacting upon each and every one of us, Father, let us learn to put our trust in you. Let us put our trust in you, Father, because you are the unchanging rock, Father. Those, Father, we know you are with each and every one, Father. You are there for each and every one. We know, Father, that not all of us, Father, are accepting of that. But, Father, open the hearts today, Father. Father, let us deliver that message. Let us resonate. Let us be that example, Father God, to bring souls to your kingdom, Father. If every time we need you, Father, it's right now. We know you will never abandon us. We know that you are with us always, Father. We know that your love is unconditional. Father God, we just ask that you continue to bless each and every one of us, we pray, as we journey, Father, as we journey with you, as we journey into your kingdom. Father, we just ask for your blessings right now, we pray. Bless this short service this morning, Father God. And Father, as we hope, Father, to come out of the imposed lockdown that we're all under, Father, Father, we just ask, Father, that we progress. Progress in your name, we pray, and seek that spiritual guidance from you, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you this morning. Um, our announcements this morning. Um, this evening at 8.30 we shine a light and we'll be on Facebook Live. So please do join us. But you don't have to just watch it on Facebook Live. Come out. And you know, if you come out and you indicate to me that you want to be on the screen, we'll pull you in um, to shine a light as well. Come out and you shine a light as well. You join us. Let's now make it active. Okay, so that's at 8.30. Also as well, our food parcel service will be running this week. Tomorrow's bank holiday. So I think at the moment our team is looking for deliveries on about Wednesday. But do get in touch with us if you do need something as well. Um, this um, And then Wednesday is our community update and prayer at 7.30. Also as well, and I think we need to make this announcement, many of you would have heard of the Clean Air Zone. It actually goes into effect on the 1st of June. So if you drive into certain parts of the city, you will be charged £8. So it's important that you check out your vehicle. Just type in Birmingham Clean Air Zone and have a look, please, because that is becoming, that will become a major issue. And it's only right that we let you know. Even some of you that will be going to your own church on a Sunday morning, there are some churches that you'll be going to where you will inadvertently stray into the clean air zone. And for that matter, mosques, gurdwaras, temples, that will happen as well. So please um, just Google Birmingham um, clean air zone and have a look at that as well. Next Sunday, we're here at 11 a.m. and then shine a light next Sunday but this evening we shine a light at 8.30 and for the coming months you'll get the um, dates for the Lozelles Community Forum you'll also get a date for one of the residence associations in Newtown that will be starting very shortly and you'll also have dates for um, the Windrush National Organization meeting and also the We Matter public meeting as well and a message from We Matter is there anyone out there that wants to Give consideration to becoming a counsellor, you know, stand for counsel, becoming a magistrate, becoming a independent monitoring board, visitor at prisons. We've also got a project um, that we're working on with the Windrush National Organisation for the Commonwealth Games, looking at um, the journey of the Windrush generation here in the West Midlands. Please do join us, get in touch, you know how to. So God bless you this morning and um, thank you for just being brief attention um, um, to that and it's going to get very busy as well and one final date um, the 31st of July save that date next week I'll have more information on that Saturday the 30th of July uh, Lowell Road Sports Centre and Community Centre and uh, we'll have more on that 
as well. And one thing that slipped my mind, sorry it wasn't written down, on the 6th of June, next Sunday, at the Legacy Centre at 3pm, taking back our community, um, a focus, a gathering on the ills of knife and gun crime. Um, so do pop down to Legacy Centre next Sunday at 3 o'clock. God bless you this morning. One of the things we must do is this. Get together, get together, get together in the Lord. Let us all get together in the Lord. Let us greet one another like sister and brother. Let us all get together in the Lord. Oh, get together, get together, get together in the Lord. Let us all get together in the Lord. Oh, let us greet one another like sister and brother. Let us all get together in the Lord. Come on, sing at home. Get together, get together, get together in the Lord. Let us all get together in the Lord. Oh, let us greet one another like sister and brother. Let us all get together in the Lord. Amen. Praise God this morning. Let's give God the glory, the honor, and the praise this morning. Our scripture reading this morning is taken from Jeremiah chapter 29, verses 5 to 12. Jeremiah chapter 29, verses 5 to 12. And I'll read, Build ye houses, and dwelling them, and plant gardens, and eat of the fruit of them. Take ye wives, and beget sons and daughters, and take wives for your sons, and give to your daughters. Give your daughters to husbands, that they may bear sons and daughters, that ye may be increased there, and not diminished. And seek the peace of the city whither, I have caused you to be carried away captives and pray unto the Lord for it for in the peace thereof shall ye have peace for thus saith the Lord of hosts the God of Israel let not your prophets or your diviners that be in the midst of you deceive you neither hearken to the dreams which ye cause to be dreamed dreamt for they shall prophesy falsely unto you in the in my name and I have not sent them safe to Lord. For thus saith the Lord, after 70 years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word towards you in causing you to return to this place. For I know the thought that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Twelfth and last verse says, Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. Here endeth the reading of God's holy word. Glory be to God. One of the things that, you know, in this time we have together this morning, that I want us to focus on, what is the single greatest thing that can happen to us? What is the single greatest thing that ever happened to you? Amen? Some will say, it's getting married. Some will say, it's the day I got a job. Some will say, it's, it's when I had my first child. Some will say, it's when I actually met the person that became my wife or when I met my first girlfriend. There, there are so many things that people can say, you know, the greatest thing is when I bought my house, you know, when I got my own flat. You know, there are so many things that we, can say but importantly importantly isn't the greatest thing that we can do in our life is to know Jesus come on now because remember from we know Jesus amen from we know Jesus then aren't we much better off for knowing him amen aren't we much better off for knowing him I put that challenge to you this morning. Isn't that one of the single greatest things to know our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? Because with him, we are everything. Without him, who are we really in the Lord? And that's the great, most important thing. 
I mean, we must remember verse 13 in Dry Mai says this. In those days when you pray, I will listen. If you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. Amen. So that's leading on from the scripture. If you know Jesus, what is greater than knowing him? Come on now. Do you know something? When, when, when we're born, we get christened and prayers are said and we're blessed. And even when someone dies, you're taken to church. Many, many, many bodies are taken to church and there are many funeral services in churches. So what does that tell you? When people are sick, we pray to the Lord. When sometimes when people just need a bit of encouragement to go for a job interview or when they apply for their children to go to school, we'll pray, we'll have faith, we'll trust in God. Amen. Isn't it the greatest thing that we've ever done is to get to know God? Amen. And getting to know him and receiving the blessing of the Lord. It's the, it's the greatest thing can ever happen, can't it? Isn't it? Because when you think about it, right? How much does it cost you? It doesn't cost you anything. It doesn't cost you anything to know the Lord. Does it? Nothing whatsoever to know the Lord. It doesn't cost you anything. And that's the beauty of it. So therefore, what does it make it? Priceless. And if it makes it priceless, then, come on. Isn't the greatest thing? Because remember, some of the greatest things in life are actually free. Amen? Because they are priceless, you can't put a value upon that. And because you can't put a value upon that, what it does is, it actually makes everything that we stand for the greatest thing that we can ever experience in life. Knowing Jesus is greater than any accolade, any man-given accolade that you can have. Many people celebrate getting their recognitions each year. Twice a year, they will announce honor lists. And great, congratulations to everyone who gets one. But isn't the greatest gift of all eternal life? Isn't the greatest gift of all is to enter into the kingdom of heaven? Even the greatest gift of all is to know that when you leave this earthly place, you go into the arms of the Lord. Isn't that the greatest gift that you can ever, ever receive? No matter what success you have in life, we must remember we are mortal man. We have a queen, no matter how great the queen is. She is still mortal. Amen. President Biden of the United States of America, he is still mortal man. Each and every one of us, your bishop, your pastor, your deacons, your evangelists, are normal people. Amen. So no matter where you stand in life, there is no one greater than God. Amen. So, he's the greatest one. And no matter what anyone says, we must, we must and we must know the Lord. Knowing Jesus is greater than any mansion you can own. Because it doesn't matter. I, I know people who have built 100 room houses. Yes, 100 rooms. But that doesn't make you greater than God. Those are earthly materialistic issues, but how are you spiritually? Are you on that spiritual journey with the Lord? Amen. And that's the difference. And I just want to wake you up to that harsh reality today. No matter what we have in life, we could be driving, you could be driving around. I remember, I, I'll say a larder because I remember at one point when larders were the in cars in, in places like the Caribbean. Or you could be driving around in a Bentley. It makes no difference at all because you are still mortal man and there is no one greater than God. Knowing Jesus is greater than any wealth you can accumulate. We've seen rich lists. People make a billion. Some people worth two billion pounds. We look at people like Bill Gates. Amen. But life's trials and tribulations enter into each and every one of us. And one thing money can't buy us 
is God's love. Amen. Money cannot buy us God's love. Money cannot buy us God's grace and humility. Amen. Knowing Jesus in his experience, who can raise anyone from the dead? Amen. Knowing Jesus and experiencing Jesus and the power that raised him from the dead. Amen. Come on. Who is the greatest? What is the greatest thing that ever happened to you in your life? Being introduced and developing the love of and for Jesus. The love of, experiencing the love of, and your love for Jesus. Meaning, it's a two-way process. Amen? So therefore, let us just focus for a moment. The only thing with everlasting value is what? What is everlasting in our lives and what is unconditional? Amen? What is everlasting and what is unconditional? Lasting value. If you go out there and you buy a brand new car, as soon as you drive that car away from the showroom, do you know it loses about 10 to 15 percent? Some of them even up to 20 percent of their value. Yes, there are some where you have to wait two, three years on a waiting list that may go up in value. But look how long you've got to wait for that. Amen. But the love of God, the love of Jesus, there is no waiting list. And it's immediately and readily available. And it's free. Amen. Your intimate relationship with the Lord. That is there. And the intimacy of that relationship is driven by you. Because it's how much you love the Lord. Amen. And that's driven by you. And remember, the most important thing is to foster that relationship. Meaning grasp that relationship. Let that relationship grow with the Lord. Amen. Paul tells us in this scripture, he tells us what matters in life. Worshipping Jesus. Meaning that we acknowledge Jesus as our personal saviour. Amen. We acknowledge Jesus as our personal saviour. And what do we do with that? We worship him, but we lay everything to Jesus. We rely upon Jesus. We lean upon Jesus. Amen. But also as well, there's that spirit of worship togetherness coming together worshiping the lord that's one of the things we have to do and trusting jesus when everyone else lets us down when every other person lets us down jesus is there for each and every one of us and sometimes as well when you feel let down and you feel that you know you're just about to give up jesus will send one of his saints to guide you jesus will send one of his saints to be with you Jesus will send one of his saints to strengthen you with the word and with the love of God. Amen. Knowing Jesus. Amen. Knowing Jesus. Who is Jesus to you? Who is Jesus to you? You have to get to know the Lord. Do you, my simple question today. Do you know who Jesus is? Do you love the Lord? Do you want to experience the power that raised him from the dead? Do you really need that all-important resurrection in your life? Do you really need that spiritual fulfillment? When you are down, do you need uplifting? When you think that all the odds are against you and society is against you, do you need to lean upon someone? Do you want to link arms and be held up until you can stand back on your own two feet? Do you need someone to stand with you? When everything is stacked against you, what do you need in your life? Come on, what do you need? And I will tell you this, you need Jesus. Amen? So today is a simple message. The greatest thing you can experience in your life is the love of God. Amen? It's time that you give your heart to the Lord. It is time that you take that next step. The Lord is there for each and every one of us at any time, any place, anywhere. 
But there are many times when we want to be extremely convenient with the Lord. But come on, today is the day. The sun is shining. There is sunshine in our soul. Let us reach out to the Lord today. And let us just let God's love manifest in our hearts. Let no one turn you away from the Lord. My God, there have been many times in my lifetime where even I, my faith has been challenged. Your faith has been challenged. Your patience has been challenged. But you have to hang in there. And that's the love of God. The love of God is there. There are times when we reject God. Amen. There are times when we reject God. There are times when we reject the love of God. But there are other times when we let the love of God manifest in our hearts, in our souls. And that's what we need to be doing. So today, we have a simple message. God is with each and every one of us. It is up for us to open our hearts to the Lord and experience the love of God. God bless you this morning and God keep you. And you know what? We're going to develop on this because we want God. And just many of us, no matter what, many of you this morning, no matter how you may feel, no matter how challenged you may feel, never ever give up upon the love of God. God bless you. We're going to go into a time of prayer this morning and we're just going to ask God's blessing upon not just the weekend, what's happening in the world and that he brings souls to the kingdom. And those of you that receive this message today, do give your heart to the Lord. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. God has spoken. So let the church say amen. Father God, thank you for this day, this day that you have made, Father. Thank you for your word this morning, Father. Let it resonate in our hearts right now, Father. Father, those, Father, who are wavering whether or not to have that relationship with you, Father. Father, we ask you to draw them closer to you right now, Father. Your arms are always open, Father. Father, we just commend them to you now, Father, and let them commit, their, commit to you and commence their spiritual journey with you, Father. Father, those of us, Father, who are there, Father, just empower us, Father, to spread your love right now. If ever a time we needed to spread your love, it's right now. It's right now. We can always say we need you, Father, but also, Father, we have our roles and responsibilities to play. Father, we pray for those in government. We pray for wisdom. We, Father, you see the plan of the enemy to cause yet again confusion. But, Father, let the way, truth, and light resonate through all of what is happening. We pray for our emergency care workers, Father. There appears at times to be confusion there also. But, Father, we just pray, Father, again. Father, we pray for leadership. Let your leaders rise. Let your leaders, Father, that you appoint, let them now take the lead and let what they do resonate, Father, we pray. Father, we live in a society sometimes, Father, where many are delivering messages, but we acknowledge and we know that those messages, Father, aren't from you. Let your messages resonate, Father, in the hearts of others. Father, there are so many things going on out, Father, in our streets, in our communities, that impact upon each and every one of us. Father, bring peace, calm, and humility to our streets. Those who are hungry, Father, empower us to feed them. Father, those who are in need of your love, let us just continue to journey in you. Bless us now, we pray. Guide us, we pray, as we give you thanks in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you all, and this evening we will be shining a light, as I've said, at 8.30. So until then, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace now and forevermore. Amen. Until 8.30 this evening, God bless you.